Hello, this is Dan Sabalansky, and welcome to Colonial Metalsmithing. Today I'm going to go over the fabrication of a sconce. Here's the sconce that I'll be fabricating, and this is really something that was probably made by myself 50 years ago. I never really used it because it had a few deficiencies, so I just saved it as a pattern. And as you can see, it's what I call a heart sconce, obviously, because it has hearts on it. And one of the things that's challenging about this sconce is when you flute this edge, it has a tendency to distort the metal. And on top of that, when I put this swedge bead in here, it also creates a distortion. So it's, you know, always been my challenge to kind of get it so that it was in a continuous plane and looked you know pretty decent that way um, this has some issues in the way it was fabricated only because of the tools and equipment that I had also on this particular sconce I didn't put the slotted uh, candlestick holders in there and if you look inside the candlesticks you'll be able to see that they get plugged with wax. Now, what I use on this new approach is I use the slitted openings. Um, a little bit more difficult to make because it's hard to bend something with this tight a radius without uh, a lot of manual work. But the slitted ones allows you, and you'll see this later, to stick a knife in the slit and actually lift the candle out. Here the candle is so melted in place, probably the only way I could get it out is with a drill. Um, this was made out of turn tin, and the one I'm going to make is going to be out of tin plate, which is steel, st st steel covered with tin. And this particular tin that I will be using is basically dipped tin. And the advantage of dip tin is you get a nice heavy coating on it. And the other type of tin is plated tin. And that's kind of what you see on a tin can. And there's different levels of plating. But they can get it so thick that if you leave a tin can out for a couple of days, it will actually start to rust. Now here's the pattern that I made to go with this. And as you can see, the pattern has the knockouts for the hearts and it has two holes here and this is so that I can position the candlesticks precisely every time and it's got little holes in the top and this is so I can mark out the flutes um, so when I crimp them they're crimped evenly across the top and it's got a couple of side uh, holes and I drill these so that I can mark the edges. So let's get going um, and let me start with the piece that's been roughly cut out and I'll lay it right up here and center it and I'll scribe right around this Now this was probably one of the prettiest sconces I made, but it's also one of the more difficult ones, only because the laying flat part has always been a challenge. But when I did this, obviously I liked it so much that I put the effort into making a pretty detailed pattern, which would really make it simple to mass produce. Now that I marked it out, I gotta cut it out.
Okay, so there we have it. It's cut out. The two holes that I marked out for the candles are here, so that means it just has to fold up so it's on the inside, not the outside. And it's a lot simpler than you think. I actually set it on a piece of wood. It could be any kind of wood. Okay, so now you're probably wondering how you put the holes in there for and actually you punch them in and I have to make be careful that the way I normally do it now is I have the holes penetrating and sticking out on the inside and I'll show you what I mean by that so that means I got to pound it from the back side and I'm lining this up and I'll put some weight on it again to hold it in place And I'll take my punch, and this punch here is just a standard nail set punch. They come in three, three sizes, depending on the size of nail you're trying to set. This is the smallest size. You can buy a set for less than 10 bucks at any big box store. Okay, and there we are with the heart shape pattern. As you can see, it sticks out. This is obviously the, the piece that will be facing out. Uh, one of the things about using, putting patterns in, it distorts the metal, so you have to really work on keeping it nice and flat. The next step is to put the flutes in, which really are these things right here. Um, so in order to get these things so that they look decent, they have to be evenly spaced because you just can't do it at random. Otherwise you get a disconfiguration of the radius. So basically I take these little holes and I mark out with a sharpie the evenly spaced location of these. Then what I do is I take and draw a, a line so that when I actually put the flutes in they're focused towards the center point which is right here okay and when I'm done of course I'll take some acetone and I'll j just erase the line which is pretty easy to do okay so there you have them all focused towards the center point, which is right there. So here's my fluting tool. Um, basically, this was originally designed in, for uh, downspouts. When you fit one downspout into another, you need to crimp it so that it actually fits or reduce its diameter from this big to this big. And this will actually do that. And I'll start by crimping it partially. And I'll go over this in a couple of iterations. And I'll keep the blade of the crimping tool right on the tangent lines that I drew. set this down a little bit. 
because of the stiffness of so what I'm going to do is just hammer it because what happened is the stiffness created by the punched heart resulted in this wanting to go in the opposite direction. This, or Okay, so you can see as I've gone around here, it's actually shrunk the top of this and pulled it in. And I'll continue doing that. So this is a little bit of an art here because you want to get it so it pulls in decently and it lays fairly flat. Okay, so it's pretty well out of whack. In other words, if you look at it, you can see that it's out of whack. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to something that's fairly solid, which of course is my... I'm going to take my hammer after I set this... Okay, so there you go. That's about as good as you're going to get. And uh, the next step is I'll take this over to the bar folder and fold it so I have a hem here and fold this up. And we've done that on a few occasions, so I won't show you that step because it's a pretty standard step. But I will show you putting the swedges in. Okay, I turned up this edge in the bar folder. Uh, the next thing is to put a swedge in to help stiffen it even further. And the dies that I have in here are a copy from old swedge dies. I made a set on a, some tracer rolls. And this takes a couple of iterations to get in here. And there you have it. I bring it right to this point here because I'm going to fold the bottom up after I get done doing this step. Okay. So now that we have two of these done, the next thing we have to do is take and fold this up at the bottom. And to do that, we go to the box and pan break, and I've adjusted the fingers so that they're about right. And I'll clamp it down. And then I'll bring it up. And get it to about a right angle. And there you have the bottom put in place. It's a lot easier to do it this way because it saves a you know a soldering joint. You don't have to hold it together. So this is the simplest way to do it. Okay, so here we have an almost complete sconce. We've got the heart punched in. We got the flutes on. We have the decorative bead on the side. It is almost flat, but it will never be completely flat because of the design. Now we have to manufacture the two candlestick holders and put the front part on. So the way to manufacture the candlestick holders, and as I mentioned, I always make them at 7 eighths of an inch and they're what I'll call dog-eared. So I cut the corners off, and I cut the corners off. A pretty simple way to do it. So 
the process is to take and actually roll, hand roll these into as much of a cylinder as I can get. And it's an iterative process. And there's no other way of doing it because the problem is the rolls never go small enough to do this. You could also form them over steak by pounding them, but this here is a little bit more efficient and quicker. And now I'm rolling it around a 7 8 inch mandrel. Okay, the next step is to put on clamps and these clamps I'll use to actually bring it into final diameter. Tightening the clamps. As you can see, it's slowly closing up. I'll put another one on to try to keep this equal, improve the perspective. We rolled around here. I'm going to take a wooden mallet and block and set it down then I'll take it off and, and there you have it um, it's got the slit in it's pretty close to round. Set it down so that it's flat. And this is always, this can. And I have pre cut the pieces and already put the fold on them. And basically, again, this is a manual process. And I use this four inch dial that I have. So there's the first one. And here's the second one. And this is basically the configuration of the bottom of this. You saw me make the candlestick holders and actually I held them in place and soldered them onto the bottom prior to putting the front grill on. And I did that only because it gives you a little more accessibility to solder and when you solder these candlestick holders in place you really need to get full penetration all the way around because when you put candles in, they're not all standard, especially candles that are hand dipped where there could be a variance between an eighth of an inch or so. And putting the, the grill on was as simple as holding it in place and just soldering around the edge. So it's pretty straightforward in doing that. Um, now the only thing left to do is to polish this out and of course I'm planning to use a polyurethane clear uh, varnish on this. So here are the completed three sconces. This one has been sprayed with a slow drying polyurethane clear colored. I've tried acrylic 
but it dries too fast and sometimes it dries cloudy. So it took a couple of iterations to get this right. Um, the next one has been painted a federal blue color for those that would like something that has a little more color. Obviously you could paint it with any color you wanted. And the last one I have here, of course, is red brass. Now you can see at the bottom where the candles are that you can just stick a knife in and pull them out. Also it gives you some flexibility for the different size candles. The candles that I'm using here and are actually natural beeswax candles and I use them because they burn slower but they also um, don't burn as hot. So that's one of the advantages. This completes this episode of the sconces. I've probably made four other types of sconces. Um, my next project will probably be something will will not be a sconce, but uh, stay tuned. This is Colonial Metal Smithing. Nice seeing you. Hope to see you soon. Bye.